Right, welcome to lecture seven. Now we will finally come to the swing up part where we will swing up this pendulum. All right, and to come up with the swing up controller, uh, we will uh, consult an old paper by a colleague of mine, a colleague of Austin, uh, together with the Furuta, uh, the professor that gave name to the Furuta pendulum. It says swinging up a pendulum by energy control. And the, the fundamental idea is to, to figure out an expression for the total energy of this pendulum. So it has potential energy and it has kinetic energy if it's uh, rotating. And by uh, controlling the energy such that it gets to the value uh, we have when the pendulum is here, uh, then uh, the pendulum will be on a trajectory that would bring us to this particular equilibrium. So here the pendulum has only potential energy, no kinetic energy. When it's somewhere in between and it's rotating, it has both. But as long as the total energy is correct, it will be on a trajectory that brings us exactly here. Then in practice, it would be difficult to end up exactly here. So what we do is uh, when we are sufficiently close to this equilibrium, we will switch controller and then we will use the stabilizing controller we designed in the previous video. All right, so in this uh, paper, uh, Kaliwan and uh, Fulita, they come up with this dynamical equation for the pendulum or some parameters and uh, we're not gonna bother with them now. And the interesting part is the uh, angular acceleration and uh, the input u. So the angle here of the pendulum is called theta. All right, so they go through some derivations and they uh, come to the conclusion that the total energy of this system is given by this particular expression here. So it has the velocity of the pendulum and it has this cosine term of the angle. Uh, then they uh, differentiate the energy with respect to time. And they see that it's given by some expression here and they simplify by putting in the expression for the angular acceleration and they end up with this. So here in this uh, differential equation the energy is the state and that is just some function of the input here but it does not depend on the state itself. So this is just an integrator. We just integrate the input with a time varying gain. The gain of the integrator here happens to depend on, on the angle. And so if we could make sure that this always have the correct sign so the integrator is always integrating towards less error, uh, then we would be good to go. So uh, the authors here propose this particular uh, control law. Uh, it's uh, perhaps somewhat complicated, but the interesting part here is we multiply u with the sign of this term. So if we take this term, which in general can be both positive and negative, uh, say that we multiply by this term one more time again, so we select u to contain this term, then we will have squares here. Then this will always be positive. Uh, so that would be good, but instead they take the sign. It has the same effect that it will always create a positive term, uh, but it will not vary in magnitude. And then they have a gain and they introduce the reference energy here. So the reference energy would be the energy we have when the pendulum is standing still in the top position there. So this is kind of a simple, and then there is a saturation here so that we don't uh, apply too much uh, control input. So this is a very simple control law that would bring the pendulum to a particular total energy, the total energy required to exactly reach here. All right, so I have implemented that. Here is an expression for the energy of this particular uh, instantiation of the pendulum. You see the cosine term here, and the uh, here I call the, uh, the angle alpha instead of theta that they used in the paper. And we have the angular velocity there. I have implemented this in a little script. This script begins like all the other scripts by uh, um, creating some uh, logging vector. Uh, it instantiates the state feedback gain we designed with the LQR uh, in the LQR video. We read some measurements. We normalize angles now because now angles are important. So this normalize angles, make sure the angle is always between zero and two pi. And then we have a little check. If the angle of the arm is too far out, 
uh, then uh, I will apply a correcting action because there is a stop here. And if I hit that uh, too hard, the pendulum might be detached from the base like that. The magnetic coupling might fail. And also it's very noisy and uh, not pleasant to sit next to. So, so uh, if that happens too much, it uh, terminates. All right, and then we select if we choose to use stabilizing controller and the angle is close enough to pi, close enough here is uh, 0.4 radians, then we apply the stabilizing controller. So this is the LQR state feedback, uh, reference minus the actual the estimated state. And we saturate that to between the negative 10 and 10. If we are not sufficiently close to this angle, uh, then we apply the energy-based controller. Uh, so here uh, we have the alpha from the uh, uh, energy function. We have the reference alpha and we have the uh, angular velocity and then we compute the energy. So here we have uh, the term energy minus energy reference. So the reference velocity is zero and here is the reference angle. And then we have this sine term to make the, the integrator always integrate in the correct direction. And then I have uh, chosen to, so this is the energy based control input. Then I've chosen to apply a small uh, proportional gain that just brings the pendulum to kind of the center here so it doesn't hit the end stop too much. All right, but that should be um, uh, all we need. So I start by homing the pendulum. So that just means that now this is defined to be the zero angle. And then we can run the controller. All right, and there it swung up. Uh, can I hit it? Yes. I can block it from moving so the pendulum will fall down and we see that it catches it again. Yep. All right, so it works as intended. And if I terminate this, we should get a little plot. All right, so here we see the angle. It starts at zero and it starts swinging up. It went to negative pi and it stops there. I have pushed it here a few times. There are some bumps. Then I uh, blocked the control actuator so the pendulum fell down, but it caught it here. So this is now negative uh, three pi, I guess. Uh, and it stabilized there. And then I held it again and it fell down and up and down and it stabilized here. And then I did the same thing. I pushed it a few times and it kept, and then it kept in the other direction. All right, so it's okay to stabilize at any multiple of the two pi uh, plus minus pi. All right, we have the arm angle here. It's not particularly interesting. We have the control input here. We see there is some uh, noise. And whenever I hit it, there is a peak. The controller does something about it. And uh, yeah, here we see the timing. Uh, my desired sample time here, sample interval is five milliseconds. And we see that typically I'm a few percent above that. And we see that something happened here. And it took a bit longer time for some reason. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but it seemed to have been okay. All right. So that was essentially it. Now we have gone through getting to know the system, uh, doing some modeling, friction modeling, parameter estimation and so on. Uh, we designed a stabilizing controller for this uh, upwards equilibrium and then we designed a swing up controller that combined the, the energy based swing up control and the stabilizing control. Uh, the next video we will uh, take a look at sliding mode control for robust uh, position control of this system where the pendulum is just a disturbance. Alright, thank you.